You may have noticed uh, on the interweb and elsewhere, there are loads of discussions about the intricacies of medieval weapons, particularly uh, amongst um, nerdy types who play role-play games. And they talk about oh, anyway, how this sword is very, very slightly better than that sword. Should uh, So under these circumstances, you should get plus one in combat. And, and this type of axe is very slightly longer or shorter or, or heavier or something than another one. And, and they talk about, oh, but if, if your opponent's got this kind of axe and you're using this kind of axe, but wait a minute, what if you have this kind of shield and this counters that? And they go on and on and on and on and on, all about weapons designed to kill other men who are also using weapons. But in the fantasy world, um, there are an awful lot of things other than men using weapons. You know, you've got enormous great ogres and, and, and dragons and so forth. And yet, these same people don't seem to find it uh, necessary to discuss at length specialist weapons for killing dragons. Now, if, you know, if you're faced with a 30-foot tall, scale-armoured, fire-breathing lizard that can fly, I suspect you're unlikely to say, hmm, which of my swords should I use? Um, servant, I think the number three sword for this dragon, because, you know, all swords are going to be inappropriate for that kind of foe. When faced with that kind of life-threatening situation, particularly if you're an adventurer and you're going towards it, knowing that you're going to be putting yourself into danger, you're going to do some research into considerably more effective weapons, aren't you? Um, many years ago, I wrote a, a roleplay uh, scenario and I sort of made this point, really, because the, the adventurers had all done the standard thing. They'd kitted themselves up with, you know, a sword and an axe and a mace and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I got a shield and they got quite good armour. And they went tromping off into the, this foreign land to kill a monster. Now, the monster was an enormous turtle-like creature that lived in a lake and would come out of the lake um, and kill a few villagers, smash a few houses, and then go back into the lake. This was an enormous turtle. It was, you know, bigger than a house. And um, they, they just sort of wandered around the lake thinking, well, we're going to encounter the monster, aren't we? Because this is a role-play game, so eventually you encounter the monster. And yeah, okay, they eventually encountered the monster after an awful lot of wandering around the lake. And they uh, did hopelessly against it because their swords were just useless. They couldn't hack through a, a shell that's that thick. Um, and how could they just stop it escaping back into the water? As soon as it did take any damage, it went, oh, that hurt a bit, I'll go back into the lake. What are they going to do to stop it? Stand in front of it? It's the size of a house! So they didn't kill it. It got away and you know, healed up a bit. And some while later, uh, the same player characters got to watch a load of NPC men in the army show them how to do it properly. And this army was, a, was an organised lot from the evil empire, but you know, what the hell, they're useful sometimes. They can rid the, uh, the locals of this, this menace, this monster. And they observed its patterns of behaviour over some while and worked out where it was likely to appear and were ready for it. And they had teams of men uh, on horseback so that they could drag great big spiked logs to stop the uh, thing retreating straight back to the water from wherever it was. So they had longer to hack at it and when it tried to retreat it would then turn tail on them so it wouldn't be able to bite them. And they had um, two-man massive great sort of halberd-like things, a big long pole with a side-mounted spike and these two-man things were for smashing through the, the shell and they did some damage. They could get through the shell pretty well, of course not do a massive amount of damage after getting through the shell because it's only a little spike, but they could get through the shell and, and keep hurting it and they could start you know, hitting it in the, in the flippers and so forth and, and leaming it and slowing it down. And they also had massively long spears that took four men to hold um, and th those were used as well for, for prodding it and, and manoeuvring it round the beach so that the guys with the hacking picks could do their work. And with these specialist weapons designed for the job, the army Saved the day. Well done, army. And, oh dear, the, the adventurers didn't look too clever in the eyes of the locals. Well, perhaps they should have thought a bit about that.